The following presentation on man specials is part of a six DVD instructional series called Offensive Sets for Success. All offensive sets are introduced by utilizing onboard diagrams followed by live game clip illustrations to showcase the execution of each scoring option. My goal in creating this series was that the end product would be something that coaches could actually use for their teams and for their programs. So often we, we're all frustrated when we go to a clinic and listen to some really excellent clinicians over the course of a Saturday or a Sunday or on a weekend and we listen all day and we hear great stuff and we jot down notes feverishly and we come up with some really, really good things and we have some great thoughts and there's great moments of clarity during those times. By the time it transfers to your season, you just don't seem to be able to transfer much of the knowledge and much of the things that you gain to your kids. Probably because most of the presentations are done on overheads or they're done uh, on the floor with no defense, 5 on 0 against nobody, um, or the, the coaches aren't coaching their players, so the execution isn't to the point where, as the onlooker, you can actually trust it. Same thing is true of videos. You know, a lot of the video presentations that I've seen, although very good for certain things, don't really give me the trust that the execution is happening against live defense in a game setting where I can see the execution against a team that's prepared to beat them. So it is my hope through this process that you will have some trust in what we've done and you can see that it's been done against teams that are trying to beat us and have scouted us. And that maybe you can find something to apply to your program and to your kids. Be prepared. Your kids are going to need you. I really believe that during the course of just about every single game that we play, there are some really key moments where the coach can be effective as a leader in helping their kids get through a troubled time offensively, a crucial, very pressure situation offensively where your kids need something more than just the continuity set that they've been running all year. And I think that's the job of the coach to make sure that there is something there to run and that there's a plan and that they're well aware of the fact that when there is a key possession or a crucial moment in the game, that the coach is ready to put the best players in positions of their comfort to take a shot that they can make and help their team in those really key moments of the game. Box is our next man special set. And like many of the others, it does have multiple options. Calling it box, obviously we have a box set. We're going to go ahead and dribble our point guard to one of the wings extended. You can, ex you can establish which side you want to run the play to, or you can put, if, you're strong, if your team is such that you've got two shooters um, that are pretty good shooters, you can run it to either side, um, however you like there. I do like to have, uh, I do, we, like, we do like to run it where we have two guards low because we like to um, post one of those guards and have one of those guards be a shooter so that we take all the bigger bodies that are defending our forwards and pull them out away from the basket. So if we dribble our wing extended to get the play started, the action starts when the point guard gets wing extended. Our shooting guard is always going to be the ball side. They'll step into the middle of the lane and set a cross screen for the other guard. Bring that guard through to the post up. We then set a staggered screen with our forwards for our shooter to come off tight to the shoulder. And get a look at a jump shot off the staggered screen at the top of the circle. In clip one, watch closely as our trail screener on our staggered screen slides over to catch a piece of the defender, allowing us to get the shot off. In clip number two, once again, it is our trail screener in our staggered screen set that makes that half a step that allows us to get the proper angle to get this shot off.
in evaluating our perimeter action on this play, and particularly looking at our screening angles, uh, we did go with a variation at times away from our staggered screen. We try to execute what's called what we call an elevator door, establish a side of the floor on our wing extended dribble. That then makes that the shooter side. We get our screen across, bring our teammate to the low post area, and instead of setting up a staggered screen at the top, we just walked it in a step and set up a door for our shooter to squeeze through. And as soon as our shooter is approaching this door, it's starting to close down. So hopefully, if, it, if executed correctly, we squeeze through the doors and they close before the defender can get to our shooter at the top. In clip three, we use the closed elevator door approach to getting our shooter open as opposed to the staggered screen approach we've seen thus far. Our next option involves getting our forwards involved. Depending upon how the defense plays you, scouting is going to create situations where your first option is going to get taken away. The play is very simple. Everyone knows we're cross-screening, we're trying to get a jump shot off a staggered screen or maybe even an elevator door type set. Taking that away sometimes is rather easy. In this particular option, we go ahead and dribble the wing extended. We get our cross screen. And now when we bring our staggered screeners in, based on how their coach wants them to play it in their scouting report, the defenders on these two screeners are key. Our shooter comes off, and you're going to be setting yourself up for a turnover, potentially if your point guard cannot read switching defenders on your two staggered screeners. So if you place a defense on your trail screener, that defender sees the shooter coming through and we get a switch out right there. This could be a turnover going the other way. So it's important now that our point has been trained and taught to read the screener. It's important that our screeners have been taught always to open back to the basketball after setting a screen. So we set that screen, we open up to the ball a step or two, and if the defender switches, this creates a nice little short jump shot opportunity on the screener slip. In clip four, the defense switches out on our shooter, allowing our screener to roll the middle and get a mid-range jump shot. One of the things we really like about some of our man specials is that the early option in the special itself is a perimeter option. So when we're being scouted by our opponents, the idea that comes across to the coaching staffs and the teams is that we're really after the perimeter option. When the truth is, is that we're just as equally after the post-up options as we ever are the perimeter option. Many times when I call box during the course of a game, I'm looking to post somebody up. As you look at our setup, we like to run this where we post up a guard. You may like to run it you may not have a lot of strong post players. You may want to run it to the only kid you have that can score with his back to the basket. We like to get our forwards out of way. A lot of our man specials in particular really isolate smaller people, or not necessarily smaller people, but guards in skill level that we have worked with during the course of a practice to teach them how to post up. So we like to, we like to guard isolation in the post. We dribble extended. Again, our opponent is expecting a perimeter special. When box is called, they've scouted us, they have us on film, they've seen us make the three-point shot at the top off the stagger, and they're looking at this as a perimeter special. We set our screen across the lane right here. We're setting up our, our staggered screens or our elevator door behind the shooter. And many times what we find is just if this player will set it up off the screen, that they can come off and receive the ball on the inside in a real proximal position to the basket and we're able to get a high percentage shot opportunity in the lane or draw a foul with a smaller player with our forward help being out on the floor.
Her five showcases the second option on this set. Post entry. Continuing on with our box options and attempting to play the game from the inside out. Our point guard dribbles the wing extended, which starts our action. Cross screen, bringing our post isolation to the ball. We're going to go ahead and get the ball inside. And then we're off our staggered screen. We're going to bring our shooter in position to receive a kick out, out of the post, to our shooter for the three point shot. Clip number six highlights a post entry and a kick out to our shooter off the staggered screen for a game winner. The last option in our box series brings our point guard through off a second set of screeners to the corner. We've gone ahead and set it up. Our point has already dribbled the wing extended to start the play. We've already had our cross screen and our shooter off the staggered screens to the top. Our point guard is going to go ahead and throw the ball to the shooter. Our screeners now, our forwards, our staggered screeners are just going to take a step outside the lane so as to not get a three second call. And when the ball is passed to the shooter, we're going to bring our point guard through off a second set of screens. for the jump shot in the corner. But number seven highlights the third and final option of this set. The shooter receives the ball at the top off the double screen. Point guard then goes through to the corner off a second set of double screens for a shot. Clip number eight gives us another look at the third option of this set. Our next man special is a double option set called 14. Many of our man specials, as you've noticed, do involve ball screening. Our point guard establishes a side of the floor, drives his defense down as deep as possible to create the flat screening angle. Dribble off the screener. As Soon as we're passing the screener now and starting to attack more proximal to the basket, this action taking place drives our shooter to the other side of the floor. Pass the screen, shooter goes. The weak side action is going to be a staggered screen, which I'll get to. In this case, we have, we've opened up the ball side of the floor with the cut, and we're going to end up with a wing jump shot. In this first clip, the point guard is able to effectively rub his man off the ball screen, push the shooter through to the weak side double screen, and hit the pull up himself on the baseline. Clip number two showcases another pull-up off the ball screen. In this clip, the defender decides to go under the ball screen and can never get quite recovered to guard the jump shooter.
Our second sequence on 14 is going to involve our forward getting involved. I've switched the play to the other side of the other side of the court. So we're starting on the right side, driving the defensive man down deep, coming flush off this screen. Anytime we pass the ball screen, we drive the shooter out off the weak side stagger, opening up our ball side penetration. In this case, our guard penetrates off the ball screen. Our forward now is always taught after ball screening to open up and be available. Our forward opens toward the basketball and realizes that there is a seam, some daylight down the lane to roll into to give his teammate another option. So we open, then we roll straight to the basket. We're able to go point to ball screener on the roll. In this fourth clip, our ball screener opens for the ball sees a back cut opportunity in the lane, and finishes at the basket. In this fifth clip, our point guard uses a nice inside-out move as misdirection for the defense for the pull-up. Our last option on play number 14 involves the weak side. Again, trying to get defenses to guard both sides of the floor very quickly. Our point guard drives down the defender, uses the ball screen. Ball screen action then drives our shooter to the weak side. We've taken our weak side guard, brought him in for a staggered screen with the forward. Our point guard has continued now driving him off, exploring his own shot opportunities on the wing. Our screener now on the open does not find any daylight. So he fires. Point guard always knows he's going to have a safety valve behind him. Point guard will return pass to our wing or to our forward who was fired. Now quite a bit of a long pass here to get it to our shooter off the staggered screen, so we teach our kids to use at least one bounce, at least one bounce here to shorten the passing distance, and we get it to our shooter weak side off of the staggered screen. The other option off that, of course, you can tell is as we're coming off the staggered screen, it's possible then that we would take a dribble, make a fake to our shooter, and depending upon how these two defenders handled that, screening situation we could throw to the screener down to the basket area. Our next man special we're calling two down. What we're really trying to do here is isolate our point guard in the post area. We teach our forwards to start low and their cue for movement is when our point guard crosses half court and closes his shoulder. There's no movement until our point guard completely closes his shoulder, is pounding his dribble, and is totally has the ball protected. That's when our forwards both move together in the same time frame, flashing straight out into the high post area, right about three-point line extended. Our point guard at that point with a closed shoulder can enter to either one of those players, whichever is the most open or whichever the passing angle is most friendly to him. At that point, we choose one of our forward flash players for the entry. We go ahead and take our point guard off of the weak side screen. Little weak side back screen right there. Point guard always flashes away from where they enter, down into the post area. Now, from that point, we've got a ball side forward with the ball. From that point, 
where the basketball goes and where our point guard isolated, where he goes, is all dependent upon where the defense plays. How much help, what angle are they playing us. The read could be to the corner and into the post. There could be a lot of help on the ball side. We may throw forward to forward, step our isolated point guard back to the ball, and go high-low. We could go through to this guard. We could skip here, making it really difficult on the defense that was once doing a great job on the ball side to get to our skip and roll our point guard through and get our point post entry. So the perimeter movement of the basketball is just designed to get our point guard isolated and get him in a situation where if he's working hard and he's playing the defense the correct way that we can get him in isolation and either a quality shot inside or a foul. In our first clip, notice how both of our forwards flash from low to high post in a timely manner. Point guard loops through to the post area and we find him for a nice high-low post pass and finish. In our second clip, our kids do a nice job of being patient, waiting for our point post ISO to be in position, and our point guard posts hard and under high duress and a lot of congestion, plays strong and is able to get the finish on the inside. In our second option, it's going to take guard penetration to finally get our isolated post player the basketball. Again, our forwards do not move to their flashing area until the point guard has crossed half court and has totally closed his shoulder. At that point, we get high post flash with some energy. We're going to choose a side of the floor to go to with the basketball. At that point, we have our forwards into the high post. Point guard always goes away from their high post pass and down into the post. We've moved the basketball trying to create a post opportunity. The defense does a nice job of collapsing. Maybe just the man-on-man -man defender against our point guard is doing an excellent job and really fighting. And what we end up with is a reversal of the ball. Point guard through, back to the ball. We're going to end up penetrating in order to get him a shot opportunity in the lane. In this third clip, our kids do a nice job of searching for the proper angle to get the ball to our isolated point guard. Without that proper angle, we penetrate, drop it to him, and they end up with the same effect. Our next man special we call four up. We're looking to spread the floor, create a ball screen situation, and some dribble interference on the weak side. Our first option is simply our point guard establishing a side of the floor, coming off flat on our ball screen, and attacking off that to force the defender and our ball screener and the defenders on the weak side to make a decision on how they want to play. In our first illustration, our point guard is just going to come off the ball screen and create a scoring opportunity for himself. In this first clip, the defense never makes a commitment to stop penetration. So our point guard drives it off the top screen, ends up down the lane with a runner off the glass. Again, with four up, we're trying to put the pressure on the help defense. We've got our point guard coming off the ball screen. Attacking off of that ball screen, putting the pressure on the defender, guarding the screener, putting the decision-making pressure on how much to help off the 
corner shooter, and as well as any help defense that might be on our weak side forward. In this particular case, we come off the ball screen, we're penetrating, and we're able to get a post drop and finish off our penetration to our weak side forward. In the second clip, our point guard uses the high ball screen, pulls up, and hits the weak side forward for the finish. Like in any offensive set that you run, you really need to have something in there to make the defense guard both sides of the floor. We've already illustrated our point guard hurting the opponent on the penetration with both a shot for himself and a shot for the weak side forward on the drop based on how the help rotates. In this case, we are going to dribble off the ball screen, attack. If we get, we tell our point guard, if you get beneath the three-point line, which is common, and you don't have an obvious read for a shot for yourself or an open teammate closer than you are to the basket, we go ahead and fire our forward, ball screener forward, fires just a couple of steps. Makes himself available now to help the point guard whose dribble is killed just inside the three point line. We pivot back out and we throw back to the screener. When the screener receives the ball, we've got some weak side action set up. It is a dribble weave, call it dribble interference, whatever you want to call it, but we get this forward off the catch going on an automatic left hand dribble and pitch. We want, to have, we want to have this player, and we practice this so we're not traveling, just a short pitch now and a jump stop right there. Just a couple of feet shy of this wing player because what we really want to have happen is we want to have the ability to pitch the ball to a, to a kid who's a pretty good penetrator and still be able to jump stop and set that ball pick to run that weave interference that will create a drive back to the middle and a scoring opportunity off a jump shot or some kind of playmaking in the lane. So that's our weak side action with our dribble interference. Our next man special is called play number one and it is a point guard post isolation. It's a play that was run for me when I was a college player. Um, our point guard is going to go ahead and enter to a wing. It doesn't matter which wing. We're assuming now there's been some sort of screening if there's any pressure, a down screen, a down screen to a curl, something like that to get one of our wing players open. If there's no pressure, no screening is necessary. What you'd like to have is you'd like to have the guards be on the wing come entry time though. So whether you have to down screen and replace, whether you have to down screen and rescreen, when you get the ball entered to a wing, we're trying to create a clear out situation in a low post. So at that point, both forwards are going to come running out of the post above the three point line. Showing their hands, asking for the ball in a misdirective way. Our point guard, at that, as that is happening, is in a screen away mode. Never intending to screen, but in a screen away mode. Other guard fills the safety spot at the top. And after this little fake screening action here on the wing, the entire low area has now been opened up. We have forwards that are high looking for the basketball and we have faked this screen in a very timely way off of this forward flash. We now are breaking into the low post area. What I try to teach my point guard about this play is that when you're going over and faking the screen, you need to do it in a sort of a leisurely way and not too much of a hurry so that when you get to the wing, now you can kind of explode off of your lackadaisical screen away approach, explode low under 
the play where no one's really paying too much attention to you on the weak side, and now you've created this situation where we can throw the ball into the post as you're flashing, or we can throw the ball into the post as you stop and seal your defender who is going to probably be trailing you. So it is a post ISO for the point guard. In this clip, watch closely as our point guard makes his wing entry. Our forwards will flash from the low post to the high post area, clearing out the low post area for our point guard to flash and finish on the ball side block. Our next man special is called Stagger. Stagger has some very unique action in the sense that it has a flex cut, a staggered screen, and a ball screen. The action starts out with a simple down screen into a wing entry. Our low post player, low post forward, whoever that may be, would empties to the corner. We make that pass to the corner. Point guard after entering moves into the low post area. We have weak side filling action taking place. Weak side fill. Weak side fill there. We now have the ball in the corner. We go ahead and swing the ball out of the corner on time to our fill people weak side. As the ball is making its way from the ball side to the weak side, we have a point flex screen being set. We have a staggered screen now being set for our point guard, ball is here, staggered screen, by these two players. We're going to bring our point guard off the stagger, look for this shot opportunity at the top. If we don't have it, our screeners are taught to go ahead and seal in a ball screening fashion any threatening defenders in that area. So as we come to our point guard off the staggered screen, if he can't create a shot at the top, he knows he can get into his right hand gap right there and get a pull up because we are turning our screeners and ball screening for the point guard. In this clip, look for our point guard to make a wing entry pass, cut the ball side block, set a baseline flex screen, and then receive a staggered screen at the top. Finally, to go on a right hand dribble and receive a ball screen for a pull up jump shot. Our next band special is called Weave. What we're trying to do is create dribble weave situations where our kids can penetrate and aggressively hunt shot opportunities for themselves or for each other on a kick out or a forward drop. Our point guard is basically going to try to get into one of the first two gaps to start out and get a kick to one of the wings. Early on it might be a little bit more difficult to get the interference that you need, but what we're looking for is a penetration and a kick, and if we can be in that area after we kick to this guard, if we can be in the area and run any kind of interference for the continued weave penetration that we're looking for, it really helps. As we make the kick, if we can run any kind of interference here, it's really key to us being able to turn it, turn it north-south toward the basket. Now, in this case, we're coming off, we get the kick, and the defender here on the, the, the new ball guard 
goes underneath the interference. And when that happens, we're able to use that interference to create an open jump shot. When the dribble weave action is taking place, we're just going with forward interchanges. Forward interchange, replace, lots of movement, all the while having vision of the basketball because penetration is a very real option for our forwards on a drop situation. In this clip, watch for a guard dribble weave, forwards flat to the baseline. We're going to end up with a pull-up jump shot. The defense goes under the interference, creating the space for the shot. Our next man special is called flat. We like flat, especially for end of the quarter situations, uh, to create um, a, a open, driving, isolated, very little help opportunity for a good penetrating player. This is simply a four flat to the baseline. We try to tell our lead person, lead guard, uh, whoever it is to come out, that's gonna come out and run this play, we try to tell them to make sure that they set themselves up for their best move. If their best move is a hard left hand crossover, or if their best move is a spin back, or if their best move is an inside out move, they need to set themselves up as the clock's winding down to go to their best move. As we approach and as the guard starts to become aggressive on whatever move he's going to make, we tell our forwards as soon as he starts to get aggressive, we want a low forward interchange. Showing your hands, vision to the penetrator, those are, that's an excellent drop opportunity. We tell our perimeter players to slide, once the guard gets to the lane, slide with hands in a banana type cut fashion so that you can catch and shoot all in one motion. In this case we're going to get a penetration and finish off a of flat. In our first clip, point guard is ISO'd four flat. We beat his man to the lane and hit a runner. In our second look at four flat, we get our weak side forward doing a nice job of shielding any oncoming or threatening help when our guard penetrates. We've got the four flat isolates, isolated situation once again. Our point guard makes his move, gets on a left hand dribble drive, and there is help available in the lane to pick up our point guard, but our forward does a nice job of stepping in and posting offensively, becoming an offensive threat, but in, 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 in the meantime, really what he's been able to do is set a moving screen. And that allows our point to continue on and get closer to the basket, and this help defense cannot get there in time before having to foul. In clip number two, pay particular attention to our forward on the left block. Does a great job of posting and sealing off the help defense, which allows us to finish this play. A thought to keep in mind when coaching your kids and coaching your program is that in the end, it's not about us. It's about the kids. It's about planning for their strengths. It's about taking that team that you have this season and doing what you can to put those players in the best position to succeed based on their strengths. I think many times, I shouldn't say many times, but I think at times coaches get, get a little bit, and I know I get this way, where you, we know what we know and we know what's worked in the past and we know what we prefer from our comfort perspective. We know the offenses and defenses that we've been accustomed to and we want to we, we go that direction. We want to show our kids that same stuff year after year. But our, our challenge and our responsibility is to take our current players and do what we can do from a leadership perspective to help them succeed. 